I am super confused by this description. Hold please. Another set of new, not a new set, it's just one video. Why would anyone want to go there? I don't know, not me, thanks. I'm so down with the wicked. Just, ugh, I just love it all. And I shouldn't even be ashamed to admit that. What? Set in Iceland, no, set in Copenhagen, no, set in, crap. <laughs> That's a conversation for a different video. Okay, next up, next up. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to what's new coming out in February. So not new for me, but new for all of us, <laughs> February new releases. So yes, it's a shorter month, all those things. I do have a shorter list than I have in January, but make no mistake, it's still a really good list. There's a lot of series books coming out this month. So if you were interested maybe in getting started with some series, maybe this will be like a good inspiration. But anyway, all that to say, Let's jump into what's coming out in February. Okay, so I shimmied a little bit this way so I can pop up pictures over here, but actually the first book I have to talk about, I actually have a physical book of, and this is The Last Grudge by Max Seek. So this was sent to me by Berkeley. I think I've mentioned this before. I'm super excited to be a Berkeley partner in 2022. Super happy to have the arc of this. So this is the third book in the Witch Hunter series. And I'm humiliated to admit that I haven't started it yet. And part of the reason why is because I bought the second book in the series, The Ice Coven, not realizing it was the second book in the series. And then when I figured that out, I went back and bought the first book, but then I didn't start the first book. But then when I saw the third book was coming, <laughs> I was like, I need to read the series. So a lot of series, like I mentioned, and I don't want to read what's on the back of it. So let me show you The Witch Hunter. Okay. So again, I've got, I've got the series here. So I bought... The Witch Hunter. So this is a shocking murder in an affluent Helsinki suburb has ties to witchcraft and the occult in this thrilling US debut from Finnish author Max Seek. So I have heard great things about him from Abby from Crime by the Book, which I feel like should surprise none of you guys. And I just heard that this was like an amazing book, just like dark and messed up. And of course, I want to read it. So three book series. If ever there was a time to start, this is it. So I'm going to be diving into this, but The Last Grudge comes out for anyone who is <laughs> ready for it February 7th, which is where obviously we're starting today's video. The next book I have is Don't Fear the Reaper, and this is by Stephen Graham Jones, and this is book number two in the Lake Witch trilogy. So this is the sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw, which I a thousand percent have, but haven't read yet. So again, with sequels, I really don't want to read too much about what it's all about because I haven't read the first book yet. And assuming not all of you guys have read it yet either, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But My Heart is a Chainsaw, I feel like that's something that's safe to talk about. So My Heart is a Chainsaw is definitely another homage to horror movies, which is something that I have very much been enjoying. I feel like ever since I read Final Girls, but I've always kind of enjoyed it. And more recently, I read like How to Survive Your Own Murder, which I really enjoyed. So we are following a girl named Jade Daniels, and it says that this is her story, her homage to horror and revenge and triumph. So she is an angry half Indian outcast with an abusive father, an absent mother, and an entire town that wants nothing to do with her. And she finds protection in a world of horror movies. So I believe kind of like things start to happen in real life that feels very much like a horror movie. So again, I'm always afraid of like reading too much of it, but I've heard so many great things about this book from so many people that I love and I just, I need to get into it. So I have it, I need to read it. I did read The Night of the Mannequins by him a year and a half ago, two years ago, like October, 2021, I wanna say I read that and I really enjoyed it. So I enjoy his writing. This again, another catalyst to get me to actually start a series. The next book is The Sanctuary by Katrine Engberg. And this is actually the fourth book in this series. So if you guys watched my 23 books I plan to read in 2023, then you will know that book number one, The Tenant, is on my list of must reads. And I have had that book for a couple of years and I've heard great things about it and I just haven't dove into it yet. I think I said that right. I, ha I haven't read it yet. I haven't read it yet, but I want to read it. So this series follows two police detectives in Copenhagen. And in the first book, they are, there is a woman who was murdered in an apartment building. And like the landlady is a writer and she writes a book that includes 
the tenant who gets murdered getting murdered in the book. So I feel like it's like art imitating life, life imitating art, unclear. But I've heard really good things about it. And I've heard that this is definitely one of those series that also gets progressively better. So I definitely want to read it. And I'm like ashamed to admit that knowing another book in a series is coming out does reignite. And I shouldn't even be ashamed to admit that. I'm ashamed to admit that I want to buy this without having read the first three books in the series, but also I guess just admitting that knowing a new book is coming out does push it a little bit further up on my list, but I will read The Tenant this year, mark my words. But again, anyone who's ready to move on in the series, <laughs> The Sanctuary is coming out. So put it on your list. The next book is a debut thriller and it's called Stone Cold Fox by Rachel Collar Croft. So this is a thriller and I, full disclosure, was not aware of this until I got the e-arc from Berkeley for this book and I was like, this is really exciting sounding. I need to check this out. So this one says a perfectly wicked debut. Mm, I'm so down with the wicked. Just, uh, I just love it all. It's about an ambitious woman who, after a lifetime of conning alongside her mother, wants to leave her dark past behind and marry the heir to one of the country's wealthiest families. So, I love a con woman. I love the con mother-daughter shtick that we've got going on here. I shouldn't call it a shtick. That doesn't sound right. The con lady life that they were living. And it says now B knows what she's worth and she's determined to get what she deserves. And it just so happens that she deserves to marry rich, filthy rich. So in this one, it says she has spent her entire life swindling men and now she set her eyes on the ultimate target, the thoroughly dull and blue blooded Colin Case. And it says the challenge isn't about getting the ring, but rather getting the approval of his family and everyone else in their 1% tax bracket, particularly his childhood best friend, Gail Wallace Leister. So her and Gail are gonna go toe to toe and it says it's a cat and mouse game, a dangerous pursuit for the truth, Everything is on the line and B must finally decide who she really wants to be. So I love the entire concept of like the con game and coming in. And it just reminds me of like so many different books and movies that I've seen and I very much enjoy it. And I love this kind of head to head we're gonna have. So a little cat and mouse I'm down with. And again, I always love discovering a debut author. So I'm really excited to have this one on my radar and I will let you guys know what I think. The next book, which I'm very, very jazzed about, is Bright and Deadly Things by Lexi Elliott. And I have not read a Lexi Elliott book in a minute. So I read The French Girl years ago when it came out and I really enjoyed it. And I am definitely remiss on reading some more of her books, which I of course have. But I saw this one and I'm just like, I absolutely am just, I'm all over this book. And I also have an e arc of this, so I like literally need to be all over this book. But in this one, we have a remote back to basics mountaintop retreat in the French Alps turns deadly as an Oxford fellow finds herself in the crosshairs of her late husband's dangerous secrets. So this cover does not scream isolated snow situation. And I know it's not like always snowy <laughs> in the French Alps, but I love the cover of this book. But you guys know I love an isolated remote setting. I love past and present mysteries and I really enjoyed The French Girl. So I'm very excited to read some more Lexi Elliott here. So in this one, we are following a woman named Emily. She is recently widowed and it says that this chalet is like the perfect location for her to get away. She's trying to deal with her grief and this place where she goes, this rustic chalet, it says has no electricity, running water or access by car. Why would anyone want to go there? I don't know, not me, thanks. And she is nestled at the foot of the snow-topped Alps and it should give her both the time and space to heal. And she is going to have a collection of her friends coming to join her and something feels off. So I would like to believe that this is going to be absolutely amazing. It says the chalet has dark history and then somebody disappears and Emily realizes that she'd better separate friend from foe and real from imagined or the next disappearance may be her own. So I don't know what this dark messed up history is that this town has, but I know her book, The Missing Years, which I haven't read yet, I believe has some sort of 
I don't know if it's like actually ghosty or sort of dances the line between thriller and ghosty and like is it or isn't it kind of a situation but I do know that that book sort of at least insinuates some sort of ghostiness happening and I don't know if this is the same thing with this book but I'm really excited for it and like I said I really enjoyed The French Girl. I also when I was talking about this like making this list I was like oh I also have How to Kill Your Best Friend which is actually something I really also want to read on the new like sooner side actually right back here. The only perks to sorting stuff by color is if you actually remember the color of the book cover. I can kind of find it easily. I don't know if you guys have seen any of my book cart tour videos yet, but if you haven't, I will link them. I'm having a whole crisis of faith with my bookshelf organization, but that's a conversation for a different video. Okay, next up, next up. The next book, I'm gonna put a little asterisk next to this because I believe this publication date is correct. So this is The Housemaid's Secret by Frida McFadden. And this is the sequel to The Housemaid. So this is only coming out in Kindle, it looks like. And it appears from like the research I can find that this will be out in paperback in August, but I'm not quite sure. I'm not questioning it. I also have not read The Housemaid yet, but <laughs> going to going to. I was actually going to pick it up before the last book that I picked up. I'm currently reading The Woman in the Library and I was going to read The Housemaid and then I was like mm, I'm really kind of feeling drawn to The Woman in the Library for reasons I cannot explain but The Housemaid is like on my non-TBR TBR. So this is a psychological thriller The Housemaid. I'm not going to talk about the sequel because I haven't read the first one. And obviously the sequel, the story continues, I'm guessing for our housemaid here. But I have heard so many people just rave about what a fun, delicious popcorn thriller kind of bingeable book The Housemaid is. So I will let you guys know what I think. But The Housemaid description, it says, Every day I clean the Winchester's beautiful house top to bottom. I collect their daughter from school and I cook a delicious meal for the whole family before heading up to eat alone in my tiny room on the top floor. I try to ignore how Nina makes a mess just to watch me clean it up, how she tells strange lies about her own daughter, and how her husband Andrew seems more broken every day. But as I look into Andrew's handsome brown eyes so full of pain, it's hard not to imagine what it would be like to live Nina's life. The walk-in closet, the fancy car, the perfect husband. I only try on one of Nina's pristine white dresses once just to see what it's like. But she soon finds out, and by the time I realize my attic bedroom door only locks from the outside, it's far too late. But I reassure myself, the Winchesters don't know who I really am, and they don't know what I'm capable of. So again, I think this is just like super twisty and fun, and I am here for it. So I will, if I learn anything else about the pub date of the sequel, I will let you guys know, but that's the information I have at this stage, so... Add it to your list if you guys are jazzed about it. The next book I have is one of my most anticipated books. It's another thriller debut, and it's called The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. So I just finished reading A Quiet Retreat by Kirsten Magdalene, and I loved it. And I also got approved for the arc. I don't know why. I'm not going to question why the universe is like flashing my way right now, but Jamie Lynn Hendricks has a new book coming out that takes place at a writer's conference. I am here for all of it. If you guys have been here for a minute, you know I am a writer. I love books about writers and I love <laughs> isolated thrillers. So a writer's retreat where things start to go horribly wrong, I am here for it. So in this one, it says Alex has all but given up on her dreams of becoming a published author when she receives a once in a lifetime opportunity to attend this exclusive month long writing retreat at the estate of feminist horror writer Rosa Vallo. Even the knowledge that Wren, her former best friend and current rival, is attending doesn't dampen her excitement. So as you guys can guess, this writer's retreat is going to descend into a nightmare. And after everybody gets there, Rosa drops the bombshell that they all must complete an entire novel from scratch during the next month, which is like nano on overdrive. And the author of the best one will receive a life-changing seven-figure publishing deal. So now you have just completely upped the stakes for all of these people, competition at its absolute finest. And then we have a massive snowstorm. We've got a mansion that feels all sorts of creepy. And then one of the writers goes missing and something sinister is afoot. I am gonna get my hands on this book as soon as it comes out and I'm absolutely gonna gobble it up and I'm so excited about it. I have heard great pre-buzz about this book since 2022 when people were starting to get arcs of it 
and I'm just really, really excited about it. And then just sidebar fun fact, she is sisters with Andrea Bart, who wrote The Lost Night and The Herd and We Were Never Here. So I just love those little writing connections too. It's funny, like, I feel like Bart's is not a completely common last name. And when I saw Julia Bart's as the author of this, I was like, oh wow, that's so funny. And then I started to follow her on Instagram and I realized her sister is Andy Bart's or Andrea Bart's. So just good fun times. <laughs> Here to give you a little trivia on top of everything else. Next one I have is It's One of Us by J.T. Ellison. Again, if you guys have been here for a minute, you know I'm a big fan of J.T. Ellison as an author and as a writing instructor. She just gives such great craft advice. She does so many great interviews. I just very much enjoy her from a writing standpoint as well as like enjoy her writing. So this is her newest book, Another Standalone, which is exciting. She does have a series as well, at least one series. But in this one, it says, everybody lies, even the ones you think you know best of all. Olivia Bender designs exquisite home interiors that satisfy the most demanding clients, but her own deepest desire can't be fulfilled by marble counters or the perfect rug. She desperately wants to be a mother. Fertility treatments and IVF keep failing, and just when she feels she's at her lowest point, the police deliver shocking news to Olivia and her husband, Park. DNA results show that the prime suspect in a murder investigation is Park's son. Olivia is relieved knowing that it's a mistake. Despite their desire, the Benders don't have any children. Then comes the confession. Many years ago, Park donated sperm to a clinic. He has no idea how many times it was sold or how many children he has sired. What? So we have a murder investigation, more terrible truths coming to light. It says with every revelation, Olivia must face the unthinkable. The man she married has fathered a killer, but can she hold that against him when she keeps such dark secrets of her own? I'm very excited for this. This is another one that I've heard great pre-buzz about from people who have arcs of this book. It also reminds me of this book, The Family Tree, that I just got. Hold on, I haven't read it yet. Like literally just came in the mail yesterday. Hold on. So I picked up The Family Tree. I went on another thrifty, thrifty situation. So this is by Steph Mullen and Nicole Mabry. And it says, have you ever wondered what your family tree is hiding? And in this one, it says the DNA results are back and there's a serial killer in the family tree. So in this one, we have a woman who does an ancestry kit. <laughs> so when she does the ancestry kit, it reveals that she is adopted. And it says, but she could never have imagined connecting with her unknown family would plunge her into the FBI investigation of a notorious serial killer. The tri-state killer has been abducting pairs of women for 40 years, leaving no clues behind, only bodies. Can Liz figure out who the killer in her new family is? And can she save his newest victim before it's too late? So this is compared to my lovely wife and I'll be gone on the dark, or at least like for fans of, loved both of those. So this came out in 2021. I would love to be able to tell you where I came across this, but sometimes I go down a rabbit hole and it leads me places. So I'll let you guys know what I think of it, but just another sidebar. Just gonna, I'm just gonna pepper this video with little sidebars and trinkets for you guys. And then the last book I have is The Angel Maker by Alex North. So I read The Shadow Friend and really enjoyed it. I still have The Whisper Man, but I haven't read it yet. But The Shadow Friend was like horror, thriller, a little slow burn, a little, um, a lot, <laughs> dark and messed up. But it also was a surprisingly, for me, effective novel about grief and loss and pain. Like I cried when I read that book. It is not common for me to cry a lot in thrillers. Um, I cry a lot in general when I read and watch stuff on TV, but I found it to be a really moving book, but also like completely entertaining and dark and messed up. So anyway, I'm here for a new book from him. So this one says it is about the mysteries of fate, the unbreakable bond of siblings and a notorious serial killer who was said to know the, who was said to know the future. Read my words. I'm going to try this description again because I just got kind of turned around by it. So in this one, <laughs> We are following a woman named Katie Shaw. So we've got kind of a past and present mystery going on here. So when she was younger, cusp of graduation, she's living in this beautiful house in the English countryside, charmed life, and then a violent stranger changed the fate of her family forever. So it sounds like something 
terrible happened to her family, but she protected her little brother Chris as part of the terrible thing that happened to her family. So it says years later, she's still unable to live down the guilt surrounding what happened to her brother. And now with a child of her own to protect, she's having a hard time separating real threats from the imagined. And then she gets a call from her brother that he once again needs her help. And then we have a parallel storyline with a detective who is facing a particularly gruesome crime. So a professor of fate and free will has been brutally murdered just hours after firing his staff. All the leads point back to two old cases, a attack on a teenager, Christopher Shaw, which is Katie's little brother from back in the day, and the despicable crimes of a notorious serial killer who legend had it could see the future. So I feel like this synopsis is a little <laughs> confusing and maybe I'm just like having a hard time reading it, but either way, I'm here for some Alex North. I really enjoyed his writing. Like I said, I really found The Shadow Friend to be a very powerful book on a lot of levels and I really enjoyed it. I had no idea where it was going. It's definitely, I already said this dark and messed up, there was definitely some gruesomeness to it, but it also was really inventive, I thought, with what was going on with the kids in that story. So I really enjoyed it. I will have my eye out for this one for sure. And if and when I read it, I will let you guys know. So that's gonna do it for February. Like I said, kind of a short and sweet list for this month, but that's okay. I've got so many books I wanna read. It's okay to have like a little bit of a breathing month. But as always, let me know what you guys are most excited to read in February. I know I've missed a whole bunch of things because I always do, but let me know what's kind of top of your list. If you've got some recommendations for the group, definitely include that down below too. And I will see you guys in another video. So thank you so much for watching and for being here. And I hope everyone is doing great and having great reading days, weeks, had a great reading month in January. And I will talk to you guys again really soon. Bye everybody.